So if you're gonna buy a computer for the holidays here and you don't know whether to buy this one or this one, then stick around and I'm gonna show you what you need to know. So if you're like the vast majority of people, certainly the vast majority of my clients, you are what I would call a pick six user. And that usually means you're gonna use your computer for maybe email, social media, maybe spreadsheets and documents, maybe opening some photos or, or watching videos, YouTube, things like that. If you're one of those people, you are probably of the 98% of the population who doesn't really do anything advanced with your computer. And if that's the case, then you certainly don't need to spend the kind of money that it, you would need to spend on an advanced computer. So obviously if you're one of those people who knows the difference between one computer or the other, this video is not for you. This video is for the people who go and buy based on the price that they see and then bring the computer home and sometimes are disappointed. For example, if you are one of those pick six users who doesn't really do anything advanced, but you just need a machine that has enough power to do what you need to do, it doesn't have to be a Ferrari, but it doesn't need to be a Pinto either. So for what you need, you can start on the lower end at the local stores, the Walmarts, the Office Maxes, um, even Best Buy. Uh, the only thing I would recommend to you is don't let the salespeople tell you what you need because a lot of times the salespeople are only in it for the commission. And that's certainly true at some of the bigger box stores. So I always recommend starting off at Walmart simply because Walmart is usually the least expensive. And I'm going to kind of run through some of the numbers for you so you have an idea of what you need. And so you can go make an educated purchase. And if you happen to come across a Black Friday deal that falls into that criteria, you're going to make a great purchase and get a lot of bang for your buck. 15, 20 years ago, brand used to make a difference. If you bought a Dell or an HP or a Toshiba or a Gateway or Compaq or Sony or whatever, there was something behind it. Either you had an HP laptop for years with no problems and all of a sudden it goes out, but you've had it for 20 years, you trust HP. Those days are kind of gone. Um, most computers now, the only reason that you can tell one computer from the other is the plastic. For the vast majority of computers, the inside of the machine is going to be very comparable or the same to another computer from one brand to the other. In other words, the motherboards are going to mostly be Intel or AMD. Those are really the only two boards out there. The memory is going to generally be made by one of the same manufacturers. Hard drives are going to be either a Western Digital or a Seagate or whatever, but there's only three or four big hard drive vendors. So if the parts are mostly the same, then the question is, why are you paying way more for one machine versus way more for the other, okay? And that's the purpose of this video. So what I would tell you is if you are a PIC6 user, for example, say you're a college student or you need a machine for your home office, a lot of, especially now with the pandemic, a lot of people are working from home. This is a perfect example. I would not get anything less than a four gigabyte memory machine. That's a good starting point. Um, I would probably recommend anything between six and eight gigabytes of memory. Uh, it's also called RAM, random access memory, but it's just commonly referred to as memory. So you may see it as eight GB RAM. That means it has eight gigabytes of RAM in it, okay? Processors, you're gonna see everything from quad core, which is four internal processors, up to eight core, sometimes even 16 core. That just means there are multiple processors on one chip. So for example, a quad core processor is one chip with four processors inside that chip or on that chip. And it basically, just like with anything else, four is better than two, two is better than one, okay? A lot of times you'll catch these great deals and they're a steel, but if you look at the fine print, it's a dual core, so it's two core processor, which means it doesn't have a lot of processing power. And a processor is exactly that. It's what processes all the computations, everything that you do. The processor is the muscle of the computer, okay? So the more processors you have, the more muscles you have. The more muscles you have, the more you're gonna get stuff done, okay? Memory is what takes the information that the processors send in other words, when you click on something, the processor says, hey, memory, go do this. The more memory you have, just like with humans, the more memory you have or the better memory you have, the faster something is gonna get done. 
So for your average office worker, average college student, an I-3, an I-5 even, would be probably plenty if you had enough memory. So if you had, say, an I-3 or I-5 with eight gigs of memory, that's gonna be a, a decent machine for you. It's not gonna fly off your desk, but it's also not gonna crawl either. You're going to have a decent amount of power for what you paid for. The third and final thing that you're gonna see when you're shopping for a computer is you're gonna see a reference to hard drive size. Now the question is, what is a hard drive? Most people have a general idea. Hard drive is where you store stuff, right? Your pictures, your documents, things like that. Most people don't understand the difference between one hard drive and the other. So I'm gonna give you a real brief overview of the two different types of drives that are gonna be in your modern machines and which one makes the most sense for you. So traditionally you had, and again, this is a laptop hard drive. It's a 2.5 inch laptop hard drive, has platters on it that stores all your data, okay? This is what people have been using for a long, long time. These are being phased out, and you've probably seen reference to what's called SSD drives, okay? SSD drives are different from these because SSDs have no moving parts. They're like a flash drive you may have laying around, okay? With no moving parts, that makes it much, much faster, and therefore, it's going to give you faster performance when you click on stuff. Now, the downside is that the SSDs, because they have no moving parts and because they're so much faster, they generally cost a lot more. We'll take two laptops, for example, identical machines, identical prices. The only difference is one has a regular hard drive and the other has an SSD. The SSD may be, for example, 256 gigabytes, whereas the spindle drive may be a terabyte or more. Same price, but you lose a ton of storage space. Now, the bigger question is, do you need the storage space? Do you have a ton of documents? Do you have a lot of photos? Do you have videos? Do you store a lot of things on your computer? If you do, either go with, in this example, the two machines, go with the machine that gives you the most storage because that's what you really need. You're gonna take a hit on performance, but you'll have all the storage that you'll ever want or need. If performance is more important, and say you use cloud-based storage, you put everything on Google Drive, for example, then you don't need physical storage. Go for the performance, but less drive space. And that's really the only difference. There's two different types of drives. The tr traditional drive is what's known as an HDD, hard disk drive. You'll see HDD, usually 512 GB or one TB, one terabyte of HDD. That means physical drive platters, moving parts. If you see 256 GB SSD, then you know it is basically like an internal flash drive with no moving parts. So when you look and say, why is this one the same price as this one, but this has way less drive space, which normally, if you didn't know any different, you're gonna buy that one because it's got more drive space, right? But that actually may be the better machine because you don't need that storage space. You get faster performance for the same amount of money. So that's where knowing the terminology makes a big difference, okay? So I'll try to sum this up for you. If you were my client and say you just needed a computer that, to replace the one that you've had for years, your kids have broken theirs and they need an a, a upgrade, but you don't wanna go buy one for the kids, but you want them to have something else, or you need a machine for the office, or you need a machine for your college student, here's what you do. I would say, Go start off with maybe an i5 processor with six to eight gigabytes of memory. And either, if you need storage space, either a one terabyte minimum physical drive in HDD, that will give you tons of storage space. Or if storage isn't important, get you at least a 256 gig or 512 gigabyte SSD drive if you can find them comparably priced, okay? So that's really the main difference. Storage, no storage. Prices being equal. Now, if you find a machine that has the same size SSD as a regular hard drive, that's gonna be probably about 200 bucks more, but that's why, because you have the performance and the storage capability. That's the difference between these two machines that have identical parts, but HDD versus SSD, and that's the difference right there, okay? So what I tell my customers all the time when they ask me, which computer do I get? I say, first of all, I figure out what they want. Are you a pick six user? Do you do social media, documents, pictures, video? Do you need a lot of storage space? 
or you just need something for the office to do some spreadsheets, maybe check email, get on social, whatever. It depends on what you need, okay? But the vast majority of people are just gonna do five or six different things, okay? And so you don't need a powerhouse machine. You don't need a Ferrari to go to the grocery store is what I tell my clients all the time, okay? So that being said, I would probably go with say an i5 processor with six to eight gigabytes of memory. And if you need storage space, at least 512 gigabytes of storage. And if you don't need, if you don't need storage, go with the at least 256 gigs of SSD space. You still got a little bit of storage, but you get the performance. That brings me to my final point. If you find two computers that are roughly what you need, now that you have an idea of what the differences are between drives and processors and all that, now say they're the identical price. What do you do? Well, this is an HP. This is a Toshiba. Which one's better? Now you could get online and look up reviews, but those are reviews of people who may love HP and they may think the HP is the best thing in the world, but it may not be the best for what you need. Here's what I tell my clients all the time as a general guiding principle. Once you have found two machine, two or three machines in your price point, in your budget, I could get any of these three price-wise, I'm fine. The determining factor should be warranty. And I'll tell you, I see it every day. I have stacks and stacks of computers that have died a month out of warranty. All machines come with a one-year warranty. However, this machine may cost you 99 extra dollars a year to extend that warranty. This one may only be $35 a year. So if you've got two machines that you can't decide between, you know what the specs are, both machines have specs that meet your criteria, but now this machine looks a lot better because it's way less expensive to extend that warranty. And what you've done is because you've made a smart purchase knowing processor, memory, and hard drive, you've saved money on the, pur on the purchase, you can spend that extra money now on buying extra warranty. All machines come with one year, right off the shelf, one year warranty, and that's all you get. Every manufacturer will let you extend that warranty, but the, the difference is, is what does that cost you, okay? So 30 bucks a year to two, three, four years, or 99 bucks a year. I don't have a brand preference. I drive a Dell. Why do I drive a Dell? Because when I bought the machine, it was a good deal. I got a great machine for a great price. Would I care if it was a Toshiba or a Lenovo or a Sony or an Acer? No, not at all. Doesn't matter to me. The parts inside are what I'm concerned with, not what the outer sticker says on the outside of the case, okay? So that being said, Quick sum summarization, find you computers that based on the information I've given you, meet your criteria. Then when you're comparing apples to apples, now the final apple is the warranty. Get the one that costs you the least amount of money to extend that warranty so that that machine will last you two years, three years, four years even, so that next year you're not having to go back and spend another 250 or $300 to buy another computer because you overspent on the first one or bought a machine that was too expensive to extend the warranty. So I hope this information helped you. With Black Friday coming up, there's going to be some amazing deals and I see them all the time and I just groan when I see them because I know people are going to go out and make bad purchases because they don't know the difference between a dual core and an eight core or four gigabytes versus 16 or an SSD versus an HDD. Hopefully now you know a little bit more and you can make a better purchase for your money. If I've helped you in any way and you want to see more videos like this that are beneficial for your average user, please click on the subscribe button so you can be notified every time I make a new video for this channel. So with that being said, hope you have a great shopping experience and Merry Christmas to everybody and see you next time.